what have you seen with the Bucks that's really stood out to you for them to get to this point to the Super Bowl? I mean, for 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 me, it's been dominance. I mean, dominance from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball. I mean, I know last game wasn't Brady's best with the second half that he put out there, but from from start to finish, I mean, I feel like the the Bucks defense has kind of changed the narrative around of them being their weakest link aside from their rush defense being top in the league. I mean, their pass defense was subpar at best, so. Uh, their defense stepping it up gives Tom more opportunities to score, gives that offense more time to rev up and, you know, get more touches, get more, get more, uh, get more reps. And I think that that has shown. Uh, the only thing that I do have to counter with that is I know a lot of Bucks fans are going to come at me sideways for this. But if you really look at it, they be a, a backup who's never touched the field in Heineke. They be a very crippled and battered and bruised Drew Brees and then. They dodged the bullet because Matt LaFleur went out there and, and absolutely was outcoached by Bruce Arians with that uh, fourth down call. So if you really look at it, the Bucks have definitely gone out there and did what they had to do. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, they don't deserve to be where they are. But, I mean, the resume kind of speaks for itself. The matchups speak for themselves. But the Bucks, like I said, they, they dominated teams they needed to beat. So just because Heineke never played doesn't mean that it needed to be that close. But they won that just because they beat Drew Brees and he was hurt doesn't mean that they shouldn't have beat him. You know what I mean? Like they, they went and did what they needed to do to be the, the road team throughout the entire integrity of the postseason is tough, but they need to continue that defensive dominance in order to not only win the game, but to rattle Patrick Mahomes because everybody knows the chiefs live and die with that man one five and to have a chance that pass rush is going to have to continue to play well. And that secondary is going to really have to show out. Yeah, I think specifically with the Bucks, a few things that really stood out to me. We'll talk a little bit about the offense first. The offense has been pretty consistent the last three weeks against Washington, New Orleans, and then Green Bay. So they went on the road, scored 31 against a pretty decent defense in Washington. Washington has a pretty solid pass rush, and they were still able to put 31 points on the board, and they didn't turn the ball over, which is huge. It, I'm always in the mindset that if you turn the ball over on the road, you definitely put yourself in a hole and it could easily get out of control very quickly if you're not able to, to steer the ship in the right way. And then the same kind of the same thing with the Saints game. They put 30 points on the board in New Orleans and they didn't turn the ball. over. And that that's something that the Saints have always been their rival, the team that they can never get over the hump against. And yet when the moment mattered the most, they were able to step up and be extremely effective when they needed to be. And then last week against Green Bay. Now, I thought the offense played spectacular in the first half. I thought Brady looked good. Leonard Fournette was an absolute beast in that first half, especially on that touchdown run where he broke like three or four tackles to dive into the end zone. And even though that they had a subpar second half, lar largely due to Brady throwing those three interceptions, I thought they, they stepped up when they needed to be, especially when – the game was close with about two and a half minutes left. They were able to execute, get some first downs, and then just ice the game away at the end. So offensively, I don't see a lot of issues with this team. Last week was the first time that they turned the ball over throughout the entire playoffs, and they turned it over three times. So I don't think that they're going to turn the ball over that many times against Kansas City, but I, I won't rule out maybe one – Brady interception, maybe a fumble, but I don't I don't think Tampa is going to be turning the ball over that much in the Super Bowl. They've been relatively clean as far as the turnovers go. Now, defensively, they have really stepped up because I'll take away the, the Washington game because I think they were largely preparing for Alex Smith in that game and it ended up being Taylor Heineke, maybe to Washington's benefit to a certain extent because even though that Obviously, Taylor Heineke is not a all-pro quarterback. It is kind of tough to play against a guy that you never really schemed against when you're kind of going up and probably doing practice sessions for Alex Smith. So I'll give them a little bit of pass there, but they, they were able to play pretty well. They were play, they played well enough to beat Washington in that wild card round. And then the Saints game, they played extremely well. They only gave up sec, seven points in the second half. They were able to get – a a bunch of interceptions off of Drew Brees, especially in the third and fourth quarter when they needed it. And they gave the offense a shorter field to work with. So 
putting points on the board from Tampa's offense was a lot easier just because I thought their defense was able to give them solid field position that led to easy points. And then when they played Green Bay last week, similar situation. They were very opportunistic, that defense. They were able to get that interception at the end of the first half that led to the Scotty Miller touchdown where Kevin King got absolutely torched. And then in the first possession of the second half, they were able to get the fumble from Aaron Jones and they converted it into a touchdown on the the next play. And last week, especially against Green Bay, their pass rush really got home. And you could even say the same thing when they were playing against New Orleans. That pass rush, JPP, Ndamukong Sue, those guys were a force to be reckoned with. And they were able to get Aaron Rodgers on the ground five times. They were able to hit and knock down Drew Brees a few times. And that pass rush, that pass rush, even though if it doesn't get home, it can definitely affect the throws and it can give the secondary an opportunity to get some interceptions. And it happened against Drew Brees particularly. So it, really, if, if the Buccaneers have any good shot of making this a competitive game against the Chiefs, they've got to get a pass rush against Patrick Mahomes, force him off of his spots, somewhat contain him. If you can contain him in the pocket and not allow him to scramble out of the pocket and make some plays with his feet, or he does have a tendency to love to roll out of the pocket and get some solid pass plays, some good chunk plays down the field. So I really think that Tampa's going to have to get a good pass rush against Kansas City if they're going to be competitive against them next week. No, couldn't agree more. It's huge. I mean, uh, and Dominic and Sue, JPP, those boys have been playing out of their minds this postseason in terms of, you know, stepping it up and doing a lot more than they normally have throughout the regular season. But another thing I'm going to touch on really quick is Tampa is going to have to run the football. Um, Kansas City's rush defense isn't the greatest, and they are going to need to keep the ball away from Patrick Mahomes as best as they can. Mm-hmm. So if Tampa can make long drives, you know, eat up that clock, and then when Pat does get that ball, find ways to, you know, rush the passer. Eric Fisher being out is absolutely critical for the Buccaneers. I'm pretty sure they're going to have a lot of tight end help on that side. So I would assume that Kansas City is already going to be limited in terms of there's not going to be a lot of plays designed to go left because they are starting a backup left tackle in the Super Bowl, which is not the best time. I know Andy Reid is a very well coached and very well, excuse me, a very well prepared coach. And I know that these two weeks have been phenomenal for him to prep said left tackle. And I just don't know if that's going to be enough to stop Tampa Bay's hot defense and to transition into the Kansas City portion for Kansas City to have to win, man. Pat Mahomes is going to have to be him himself. They are going to have to find a way to beat that secondary. Obviously, that is still the Achilles heel of this Bucks defense. Obviously, the Bucks have played Pat, as Ryan had stated on your episode a few weeks ago or a couple of days ago. Um, I don't know if Tom's going to make the same mistakes that he did a few weeks back because that game did go down to the wire. Kansas City took a, a, a huge lead early, but Tom did scr- uh, scratch back and make that game a lot closer. And I think that the Bucks are a different team than they were back then because – I mean, look at them now. Super Bowl bound. They're the home team. Their defense is finally playing up to par. The run game is playing consistent. And I mean, Tom is playing absolute like Hall of Fame caliber football right now. So I think that they are definitely for sure a different team. But Kansas City for sure is going to have to find a way to. I don't know if it's going to be on those sweeps or those trick plays or those, you know, those uh, those double reverses to try to find a way to get those rushing yards to have the play action honest but there's going to be a lot of man emotions. Andy Reid is going to have to find ways to trip that defense up in some kind of way. You can't have Pat Mahomes drop back and throw it 40, 50 times. I mean, you're already down probably your best offensive lineman on the team. You cannot afford to have Pat Mahomes eating dirt all day. So I would say that the same thing goes for the Chiefs. They have to find a way to run against the best run defense. I don't know how well that's going to go, but I think that the Chiefs are going to have to either find a way to score quick and hope that their defense can do something on their end, or they're going to have to find a way to open up that run game because Tampa is no Tampa. Tampa's defense is no no scrub right now, and Tampa's offense is definitely something you need to respect. So I think that this is for sure going to be a Super Bowl for the ages. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Just to focus on Kansas City here for a second, I think I'll tell you this. Like I said, kind of in the intro, I thought Kansas City played arguably the best game that they've played probably in a month just because they'd already kind of claimed the first spot in the AFC a few weeks before the end of the season. I believe they got it in week 16. So, and they, and they kind of struggled a little bit with Cleveland. Now, obviously I know that that Patrick Mahomes was out in the second half and they were blowing the doors off of Cleveland in the first half. So they probably would have 
romp Cleveland if Patrick had stayed in. But with all that said, though, that, that performance against Buffalo, I thought, was, was really key for them. They played well, not only in the first half, but they played well in the second half, too, especially that defense. That defense was really able to get after Josh Allen. And they got him out of the pocket, but they didn't allow him to get any open receivers down the field. A lot of the times they just tried to rush him out of bounds. And I, and really you got to give credit to Kansas city secondary for stepping up and, and keeping those Buffalo receivers largely in check. Stephon Diggs did not have that big of a day. A lot of the stats that he was able to get were mostly in the second half and they were pretty much garbage time stats anyway. So at that point, it's just kind of pumping the stats up, but with Kansas city, I think the one thing that they could really focus on here against Tampa, I think is their secondary. Tampa's secondary does have a tendency to get beat, especially deep. That's where I think Tyreek Hill really comes into play here. Because in that first matchup that they had, Tyreek Hill was an absolute monster in that first quarter. He had like 12 catches, over 200 yards receiving, had two or three touchdowns. The guy single-handedly beat the Bucks' defense. And he was able to just do it by using his speed to burn past any corner or any safety that was lined up either on him or in coverage. And he did it relatively easy. So I think that's something that, that the Chiefs can probably try to exploit again. I do think that, that Tampa is going to try to shore up that element of their defense because they know they got beat that last time with it. But if they're able to get Tyreek Hill into some jet motions, utilize him in some – some special type, I wouldn't say trick plays, but get them into some different looks that maybe Tampa hasn't seen this year. That'll definitely get Tampa's defense on their heels and they're going to have to react in a certain way, but they got to be careful with Tyree because Tyree can really break one off extremely quickly. And once he gets going, if he finds a little bit of a crease, he is gone. I mean, he was a perfect example against Buffalo last week. He takes like a little five, 10 yard play and turns it into a 70 yard gain, almost gets a touchdown out of it. So absolutely. And not only that, I, I do think that that matchup with Travis Kelsey against Tampa's linebackers is going to be another key focal point to focus on. Because Travis Kelsey has been an absolute monster in the playoffs. He's basically been Patrick Mahomes' security blanket for the entire year this year, but specifically in the playoffs as well. I mean, he had over 10 catches and had over 100 yards receiving last week. And he, I think, was able to get two touchdowns against two touchdowns, Buffalo. Yep. So... I think that matchup with Devin White, Levante David going up against Travis Kelsey, that's going to be a tough matchup for those Bucks uh, linebackers. Even though the, the Bucks linebackers have been playing pretty well recently, especially Devin White. Devin White's been an absolute monster. So I think Kansas City, they're going to have to definitely, they're going to have to scheme a little bit differently for this game. But if they're able to get Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill in some open spots, I think that's they can, I think they can definitely exploit the Bucks secondary in certain situations, but it, you still got to stop Patrick Mahomes. Yep. If you're able, if you can't get, if you can't stop Patrick Mahomes, it doesn't matter what defense you throw at him because Mahomes is too good. Whether he's in the pocket on the rollout, you have to get pressure on him. And if you, if, if Tampa can't get any pressure on him, I think, I think the chiefs are going to light it up. I think the chiefs can put up 30 plus in this game. So and that's the thing, Pat, Patrick is the oil of that offense. And you saw it in that, in that Cleveland game. When Patrick Mahomes went out of the game, the whole offense basically sputtered. But yeah. he, came, he comes back against Buffalo the next week, they put up almost 40 on, on Buffalo. And Buffalo had a good defense. Yeah. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, it's And I'll tell you this, I, I didn't really mention much about – Brady, but Brady's going to have to be his best too. He, if you, the thing is with Brady is you have to limit those turnovers. If you limit those turnovers against the Chiefs, you got a shot, and that's really the best thing that I could say for both teams. It's just don't turn the ball over. You don't turn the ball over, you're going to be just fine. You at least give your team a shot to win. So, but the way that I see this on paper, I see this that have the potential of both teams scoring thirty plus in this game. I think it has the potential for that. Couldn't agree more. I mean. I think it ends up going down to the wire of who turns the ball over first. And I also believe that uh, Kansas City is kind of a, a double-edged sword. So if you play the deep ball and you try to limit Tyree Kill inside the numbers, 
then you're going to have to worry about Travis Kelsey on the check down. You're going to have to worry about Travis Kelsey over the middle of the field. You're going to have to worry about the screen plays of Nicole Hardman and Tyreek Hill. If you play the short game and try to stop Travis Kelsey on the security blanket, Tyreek's going to blow over the top on a, on, a, on a seam or through the seam on a fly or through a deep post. So, I mean, they really have such a dynamic offense. If you, if you look at it on paper, like Ryan had listed, yeah, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski, Cameron Bray, Scotty Miller. I mean, I would say on paper, the Bucks have an advantage because the studs of the Kansas City offense are Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Sammy mm-hmm. Watkins has his hot games. Sammy Watkins has his cold games. Miko Hardman has his good days, has his bad days. But again, paper-wise, Kansas City, uh, Tampa Bay for sure has the advantage, but it's a matter of scheme. Chris Godwin's been dropping a lot of passes. Scotty Miller isn't really a one-trick pony, but kind of is. He's kind of like a, a, a deep man or not. Mike Evans has had some uh, some double coverage issues. He hasn't really been able to beat them. And then Rob Gronkowski's really been a, uh, a blocking tight end for the majority of the season. Yes, he has his his moments where he 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 chip blocks and then rolls out, and he's kind of like that last ditch effort. And or he'll just run up the seam like he used to in, in New England. I'm pretty sure you remember all of those routes. <laughs> but it uh it really does seem like it's going to be a matter of who's going to be able to out coach the other. And I think that the coaching advantage does go to Andy Reid because of all of the experience that he has. Not that uh, Bruce doesn't have it. I just truly and honestly believe if we're going advantage to advantage, we're going to go coaching first, Andy Reid, advantage, quarterback, Patrick Mahomes just solely off of talent, advantage, receiving core and supporting cast because the run game hasn't necessarily produced all season other than uh, Edwards Hilaire. I would say the advantage would go to Tampa. And then defensively, Tampa's got the hottest defense left <laughs> out of the two. And, I mean, I know that they Kansas City rushed Josh Allen. I know that Kansas City found ways to get turnovers uh, late in games. But I think that the, 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 the awakened pass rush of Tampa Bay has really set the tone for what is to come this Sunday. And mm-hmm. if, if I'm looking at it, again, I think it's going to be a really neck-and-neck game not to give a prediction, but it's going to come down to who gets the ball first or who, who turns the ball over first and who makes the least mistakes. Yeah, just, just two final points I'm going to hit on real quick. If I, if I had to really kind of point to two, to two people, one on each team, that I think could be a difference maker offensively, I think on Tampa's offense, I think it could be A.B. A.B. could, be a, big difference. AB could be a big difference maker here if he's healthy. Now, he's dealing with a – He's dealing with a knee injury right now, so I would expect that he plays this game. I think there was maybe a, a, a shot that he would play the Green Bay game, but I think they were rather safe than sorry than to put him out there, so I get it. I think A.B. could be a monster in this game if he's able to get some space. And and then to kind of focus on Kansas City here, I think Clyde Edwards-Hilaire could be a possible X factor simply because – I think it's going to be difficult for him to get rushing lanes against Tampa's defense. Now, they could watch the Tampa Saints film from a couple weeks ago and watch how Alvin Kamara was actually largely successful in the carries that he was getting against Tampa's defense. It's just that New Orleans went away from the run in the second half. They didn't stick with it. But Alvin Kamara had about 80 yards rushing in that game, and Mm -hmm. and he only got that on, on about 18 carries. If, I don't know if they're going to give Clyde Edwards Hilaire 25 carries. I, I highly doubt it. But if they're able to establish some sort of a run game early, Tampa's going to have to at least cover that. And then they could get Clyde Edwards Hilaire into some solid little screen plays. They get him on a check down. They could utilize him in the passing game as well. So that's somebody that I could see as some somebody who could make a difference on Kansas City's offense rather than just Tyreek Hill – Travis Kelsey and like Patrick Mahomes. I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire could be somebody that if they get him some good touches early, they could definitely use him in different utilization. They could utilize him differently in the second half for sure against Tampa's defense. That's just kind of how yeah. I see it. Yeah. I, I think the, the two X factors for me to be the last point, I apologize. The X factor for Tampa is going to have to be the combination of Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones Jr. And then for Kansas City, it's going to have to be the supporting wide receiver cast outside of Travis Kelsey and yeah. um, Tyree Kill. If those two guys are getting covered, if those two guys are being schemed against Miko Hardman, Pringle, 
they're going to enormously have to step up. I think Edward Hilaire is going to have to be used outside of the backfield. Le'Veon Bell is going to have to suck it up and find a way to be the Le'Veon of Pittsburgh. They are going to need a load of help to combat this Tampa pass rush because Pat cannot afford to get dinged up in the Super Bowl, or it's going to be a very, very, very bad night for the Kansas City Chiefs. I couldn't agree more. 